Welcome to Not Another White Box. My name is Cameron and this is the channel that brings you all that's cool, quirky and unusual in the caravan world. Today we're at the NEC Caravan and Motorhome Show in Birmingham and I'm here to show you two caravans that I am so incredibly excited to take a closer look at. If you've followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I am obsessed with a caravan from France called the La Moncelle. Well, today we have the very first two that are on British soil officially from the manufacturer to give us a flavour for what's coming when the range launches in Britain officially early next year. The two models we're going to take a look at today is the original Liberty, which is the pointy front design that you'll have seen so much on my social media over the years if you've been looking. It launched back in 2016 and it just continues to go from strength to strength in Europe. But they've also got this new model, the Fantasy, which is the smaller, stripped down, lightweight version that is aimed at people who are towing with smaller cars. Both of them are very different designs, both of them are equally interesting and new, and I can't wait to take you on a tour. Let's get going. This is the La Mancelle Liberty Caravan, and this particular model is the Plaisance, which is uh, the top spec model that they offer in France. Now, these are very much prototypes for the British market, I'm told, and there's going to be quite a few changes for the British market before they launch here officially in February 2023. But I'm just so excited to be here today to show you this caravan and why I love it so much. Immediately you're struck by this really strange pointy front, but that is just the very tip of the iceberg as to what makes this caravan so special. Stepping inside the Mansell Liberty, the first thing that your eye is drawn to is this incredible round booth which tucks itself neatly into the front point of the caravan. Now obviously they've made the pointed front to give it increased aerodynamics and the French caravanning press are really saying how well this caravan tows. But that's not just down to the shape of it, it also has the Alco Delta axle fitted which promises to give a superior road handling uh, qualities to a standard Alco axle. But back to this front end, it's just an incredibly cosy space and sitting in here for the first time, it's a place where I want to sit and relax and enjoy camping. You know I love orange on Not Another White Box, so to see this orange upholstery really brightens my day up, literally. But also it's got this great ambient lighting which goes around all the backs of the seats. And actually in this caravan, there's great lighting throughout from little touches underneath the worktops to lighting up the cupboards above the kitchen and the bed, there is lighting everywhere, which just goes to make it a bright, inviting and warm space. But when it's daytime, plenty of light can flood in through this huge window at the front, which you can open, but also these two completely uniquely shaped side windows, which also open front ways out, which is almost like the suicide doors on an old Citroen, which is a very French touch. You'll find bits of storage in here, such as the upper shelves and this unit here, which houses a drawer, a general storage cupboard, but also provides you with a space to put your TV. Although this is uh, a curved dinette, which is very unusual, it's, it's kind of like being in a restaurant booth, really. It's really cool and very different, or perhaps I think the look Mansell were really going for was the front end of a luxury yacht, which they somehow pull off in here because it feels like a good quality caravan. Although this is a curved seating area, it also forms a bed. This table is fixed to the floor, but by moving this lever underneath, you can cleverly arrange and position the table to make it easier to access the dinette. With the handle locked in place, being mindful to keep your fingers out of the way. You can pull the handle at the front and drop the bed down to form the base. Stepping into the middle of the Mansell, you'll find the galley kitchen. And I'll be honest, this area is a little bit cozy. However, it's still very well laid out and there's plenty of room here to prepare meals. In addition to using the table and the extra workspace um, behind you, you'll find that the shaped kitchen just allows that little bit of extra space for preparing food. There is tons of storage in this tiny little kitchen. You'll find pull-out drawers, which of course are soft shut for a nice quality touch, and even things like this sliding rack, which just make accessing what's in them a lot easier. And would it be French if it didn't have a wine holder built in? And here is specifically 
listed as the place to keep your bottles of wine. Unusually for a caravan, but not too uncommon on the continent, you'll find an extractor fan and hood here which provides illumination for cooking, but also takes any cooking smells outside. Just behind the kitchen, you'll find this absolutely enormous Thetford fridge, which really takes up a lot of space in the kitchen. But there's plenty in here, uh, plenty of room in here to put everything that you would need for a weekend away. Opposite the kitchen is the washroom. Now it's got this rather charming shutter door on it which opens to reveal quite a large space actually. There is ample room in here for a shower and the nice thing about it is it has curved walls which just help to minimise the impact on the space that this washroom has. In here you'll find a toilet, you'll find an outlet for the blown air heating to keep the space warm. You'll find some nice quality cabinetry but the best thing of all is this sliding partition which pulls over to reveal the shower to give you enough space to have a shower without wetting everything that is around the toilet area, which has long been the drawback of an all-in-one wet room. Now, this design detail from Mansell really comes from the motorhome world, and I'm yet to see it in a caravan until now. So again, plus points to Mansell for being ahead of the curve with a really useful and interesting design feature. Back here in the bedroom, you'll find a rather large wardrobe for storing um, hanging goods, but also a cupboard underneath. But in addition to that, there is a wardrobe either side of the rear bed, which has shelving and storage, which is accessible from the front or the side. Each side of the bed has uh, space to charge the phone, light switches, mains power, and 12 volt power. But I have to say, as fixed beds in caravans go, this bed is huge. <laughs> it must be at least a queen size, if not a little bit larger. Without getting the tape measure out, I'm just saying, this mattress feels a lot wider than a lot of the offerings in British caravans that have this layout. We noticed at the front that there's an absence of curtains, but in the bedroom, they've decided to put these in just to make it a cozy and comfortable environment. There is a curtain either side of the entranceway to the bedroom, so you can have a little bit more privacy back here if you wish. But the bed is really high up and you might be wondering why. And that's because without the bed being right up in the rafters like you get in a motorhome, there is an externally accessed locker as well as under bed storage that allows you a huge space under here to put a lot of your camping gear. But to not waste the space any further, Mansell have even added this unusual little drawer at the front, which I've just never seen anything like it before. It makes a good use of the space. My only criticism about this bedroom is it would be nice if you could fold the bed back slightly like you can in some of the British vans. But to be honest, the trade-off here is you've got a one-piece mattress with a bed that you don't have to keep remaking every time you pull it out or push it back. And to be honest, although it's a little bit tight squeezing around these sides of the beds, it's still accessible. And for the size of the van, this van is not very long at all. It's a fairly short single axle caravan that makes it easy to tow and easy to pitch and easy to store. But they've really worked wonders with how they've played about with the space in here to just make it feel so much bigger than it actually is. Stepping outside of the La Mancelle Liberty Plaisance, it's such an unusual and striking design, but that is not all there is to it, for it's not actually constructed out of aluminium, but instead of polyester. Now this is a material that's very popular on the continent and it means that they can keep the weight down and keep the strength up but also make it more durable and resistant to damage knocks and dents from awning poles etc. It means it's got a slightly unusual finish when you stroke it. It's not as cold as aluminium and I've just realised there how odd that sounds to go around stroking the sides of caravans. I don't advocate that you start doing that now. <laughs> At the back end here, we've got this large access locker, which we mentioned inside goes under the double bed. But the final touch, which you can't see very well here, unfortunately, 
is the curved rear panel, which again just adds to the style interest of the Mansell Caravan. But really the focus has to be the front end at the point, which I'm just going to take you to show now. This point here is finished neatly with another ABS plastic moulding, which comes to a point. I know some people on my channel in the past have perhaps criticised this slightly for looking unusual or a bit like a horse box, I've heard people say. But it's so unusual and don't forget it aids with towing. It makes it easier to tow, less likely to sway on the motorway and just does a great job of funnelling the wind around it as you're going down the road. Like I said before, it's got the superior Alco Delta axle fitted, which means it really does tow very well. And as someone who's really keenly followed the La Mancelle since its inception in 2016, 2017, I can absolutely assure you that the French caravanning press absolutely love this caravan. And it's also quite popular in Germany, which to me is a fantastic seal of approval for a French design when the Germans will take it and buy it in mass. <laughs> Stepping outside of the La Mancelle Fantasy 360, I'm going to talk you through some of the details that make this caravan so special. Starting right at the very front, it has, of course, an Alco stabiliser hitch, which is a fairly standard fitting now, and a gas strut assisted handbrake. But it also has this huge gas bottle locker, which, unlike a lot of exterior lockers that you see on caravans now, I'm thinking things like the Bailey Discovery, this one is made to really ergonomically fit in with the caravan, and it certainly harkens back to the kind of exterior gas lockers that you see on the sort of vintage caravans that I love to feature on this channel. It's really nicely styled, it's curvaceous, it fits in with the design really well. And just like the caravan, which feels extremely sturdy, the gas locker feels a really substantial piece of kit as well. Unusually for such a small caravan, it has an onboard water tank at the front. It's not a particularly large one, and I'm not 100% if it will remain in the British spec next year but it's a useful thing nonetheless. The idea being if you're out touring with this model and you wish to pull up at the side of the road and make lunch, you can wash up, you can wash your hands, etc. The onboard water tank is a really great addition for that. Like pretty much every caravan now, it's got LED lighting throughout, inside and out, but perhaps the most interesting thing about the entire Mansell range, including the Liberty and the Fantasy, is that they are constructed completely of polyester. It's an entirely bonded construction that creates a polyester monocoque which is incredibly strong and durable. Unlike a typical aluminium um, clad caravan that has bonded construction as well, this is just possibly the strongest method of constructing a caravan today. Add in the curves, which again enhance the strength. There's no corners where um, you know the stresses of being towed down the road can, you know, they always try and find the corner of the caravan and open up those seams. The curves just help to transmit those harsh road vibrations to just ensure that the shell retains its ability to keep the water out. I'm told extensive research and design reveals that when you're towing it, the fact that it is curved like this just again assists with its road handling abilities. Finally at the back you'll find a bike rack mounting point which allows you to fit one as an optional extra. Again this is something we don't see too much of in Britain um, and retrofitting onto a caravan as, as I know can be a bit of a disaster if there's not substantially enough framework behind it to support the weight of that. It's got a lovely, um, I want to say fiberglass, I don't think it is, I'm pretty sure this is a polyester um, kind of resin uh, mould as well, but it's got this nice little finishing touch that houses all the rear lights. Overall, it's a fantastically cute little package and I absolutely love this caravan. At the front end of the Fantasy is this dinette. Now, it's actually a generously sized dinette and I'd say you could quite comfortably fit three people around it um, to enjoy dinner together. Above your head is a huge, very, very deep overhead locker, which again, the storage in here is really great. But perhaps one of the most interesting things about the Fantasy is these round porthole windows. How cool are those? They're so unusual and just bring a different dynamic to the interior of the caravan. I think they're great. 
these particular fittings, although you might be looking at this thinking it's aimed at uh, you know, the cheaper end of the market, there's actually a lot of details about this caravan uh, that make it a really classy and actually really substantial feeling product. I'm told as well that the particular wood finishes that they use inside are some of the most expensive that you can put in a caravan. And certainly feeling them, it does not feel like photo finish wood. It's got a real grain, it's got kind of a relief to it. It actually feels like a proper quality piece of furniture. The kitchen in this tiny little Fantasy 360 is actually slightly larger than the one in the Liberty, but we obviously don't have that really tall fridge freezer. What it has instead in the side of the kitchen is a compressor fridge. Now this is a new technology that's predominantly used in the camper van market because it's an expensive technology. And having a little chat with the director of the Mansell company, he assured me that their caravans are not built to be cheap. They are built to be the best that they can be. So this particular model is aimed at people, like I said, who wish to travel further, might be stopping en route, etc. So the compressor fridge that runs from the 12 volt battery system or from the car only is a really, really great way of doing that. For if you don't really know about the technology, I'm not going to spend too long talking about it, but in a nutshell, it is the best refrigeration system that you can have in a caravan. But the reason we don't all have them in British caravans is the cost. A compressor fridge of this size to buy it outright is somewhere between two and three thousand pounds. So you can see why they're not fitted in Britain that much. But what it does is it runs off the battery and it works to the same principle of your household fridge. The battery works to get the fridge down to temperature and then it cuts the motor off. And then as the temperature increases in the fridge, the motor will only come back on just to get the temperature back down again. They're extremely well insulated to keep the heat out and keep them cold inside, but they just run off the 12 volt battery. And I've been told by everyone who's had them that you can run it for a week or longer if you have a solar panel without making any dent on the battery condition whatsoever. But elsewhere in the kitchen of this little Fantasy is plenty of storage, which I'm kind of discovering is a theme with the Mansell caravans. Huge overhead lockers that are really generously sized with extra shelving. And again, for what you might perceive to be a cheap budget model, you'll find soft shut cupboards and soft shut drawers, which again says to me that this isn't actually a cheap caravan at all. Speaking of money, there are no prices confirmed yet because these models are yet to be altered for a British spec. I'm told that the British versions next year will receive several tweaks, including fitting a full oven and cooker um, where possible, in line with what we're used to in Britain. But actually, it's almost a shame that the British market dictates all this equipment and weight because this caravan as a concept in its own right is such an incredible little thing and that low weight, that ease of towing, the low frills, the ease of setting up, just the lack of having to bring everything plus the kitchen sink on holiday with you, to me is the spirit of adventure of caravanning, not being tied to carrying all this stuff that we love to do in Britain on campsites. So this to me is a bit of a different concept and certainly something worth checking out. Stepping into the middle of the caravan is the small washroom. And again, we've got a sliding door just like the Liberty, but it's not quite the same design. Again, to keep the price down, um, they've decided to alter the bathroom and it doesn't have the sliding partition, which is such a great feature of the other caravan. But that's not to say that there isn't something in here that's quite unusual again. To free up more space in the shower, which to be honest, for a wet room of this size is already a fairly generous space you can actually completely remove the bathroom sink to create a little bit more extra space for using the shower. I have to admit, out of all the caravans that I've ever seen, I've never seen that before. Finally, at the back end of the Fantasy 360 is this fixed double bed. Now, the first thing that strikes me is the size of it. It's slightly bigger than a standard double, which is not quite what I expect to find in a caravan that's as small as this. There is a TV point underneath the overhead locker and also, just like the Liberty, there is a little point at the side of the bed that tucks into the wardrobe where you can charge your phones or devices overnight. The bed is also raised up 
quite high off the floor because just like the Liberty, there is a real locker, an oversized locker that allows you to store things under the bed from the outside. But this back end here is more than generously sized. We've got two small windows either end and the curved back panel has no window in at all. And the curve of it back here kind of lends itself to this being a cozy, warm space. It's definitely somewhere that I feel you could snuggle up at the end of the day after a long day of exploring, went out camping and you could have a very comfortable night's sleep. The other thing to note is that the mattress does not have a join in it like a lot of smaller caravans do. It's one piece and it is very comfortable. Again, looking around the man's cells, they seem to favour the best quality fittings that you can find. Things such as the bedside lamps that have two settings for a night light if you just want a bit of gentle illumination to see your way to the loo instead of the full force of the reading lamp. It's these very, very thoughtful details that really, really impress someone like me who appreciates good caravan design. And the, de the design details in here, as they say, the devil is in the detail. There are so many things about these caravans to love. I have to say, having spent some time in this caravan, I love the fact that it's the compromise that I think this country needs between the real outdoorsy caravans, such as the Swift Base Camp, and something more conventional that's just smaller, more compact and easy to use. When I surveyed the Swift Base Camp Owners Club, there was almost two thirds of them did not use the adaptable seating to lift it up to store bikes and such like as Swift intend when using it, which to me indicated that actually a lot of base camp owners are buying it not because it's a sporty vehicle, but because it's just a lifestyle choice that presents something different. And perhaps quite a few of them would maybe prefer to have the extra storage under the seat locker. I feel like this La Mancelle Fantasy strikes that balance quite well because you've still got the versatility of the storage, but it's a more conventional caravan, still wrapped up in a very unconventional shell. Even though we've got lots of wood finish in here, again, that seems to be a bit of a criticism amongst people who are fans of the more alternative caravans. I have to say, it's probably the most realistic wood finish that I have found in a caravan like this. Overall, it's a fantastic caravan, and I'm really glad I've got to see one in the flesh. Like we said time and time again in this video, this is not the final range for Mansell. There is more coming in 2023 for the February show. They're hoping to launch in Britain and I encourage you to check them out because aside from the obvious of this being a completely unusual concept, there are so many design details inside which are impeccably thought out and really impressed me as someone who is a very hardy caravanner. I definitely might even suggest that if I was to put my money down on a caravan today at the show, it would definitely be this one. Thank you very much for taking a tour of it with me and I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe to the channel and check out Not Another White Box on all forms of social media. You'll find plenty of posts about these from the past and all the various design details of the European spec models. But until next time, thank you very much for watching and see you again soon.